Hey, Alan. Hi, Matt. All right. So we'll go ahead and take a, make an attempt at getting started here. Um, so Alex and Yaron, can you, you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm looking into this camera right here. So uh, thank you. Every, oh, yeah. No, I think uh, oh, I'm going to keep it down for that. Thanks. So, uh, thank you all for coming to this event. Uh, and hello, anyone that's watching. Uh, and for thank you so much, uh, Yaron and Alex, for joining. There might be people dropping in. There might be people dropping in um, over the video conference during this event. Um, hey, Matt. Yes. You're pretty, you know, black that that hard to see. You don't you don't like my my camera work? <laughs> well, no, no, no. Well, okay. Let's see what that does. I don't think that does. Well, I'm going to turn the camera, um, but I got to warn the audience that I'm going to turn the camera before I do that, and then it'll blow. See, it'll think we'll have all sorts of different light over here. See, look, there's the audience. <laughs> but I don't want to put people on camera until I've told them. All right? Okay. Okay, so uh, my name is Matt Reddy, and I am I'm an elected politician. I'm an activist. I'm a, a meditation practitioner and mindfulness enthusiast. I've published this book, Revolutionary Mindfulness. Um, and I put on this event. Uh, and I also host a, uh, a podcast, a webcast, called The Mindful Activist. And um, so I've been, uh, and actually two people here have been guests on my podcast. So Alex was a guest, and Scotty uh, was a guest on one of my uh, shows. Um, Yvonne is like our number one fan. He's watched at least two or three of the episodes. <laughs> Um, I got a t-shirt. <laughs> you got a t-shirt? Or you, you want a t-shirt? <laughs> yeah. Um, so today is a really unique uh, event and day for me to try to put this on. It's, uh, it's, um, it's two things. Um, and one of the reasons it's challenging is because uh, it's, it's, it's a very new type of thing I'm trying to do. So this is kind of part podcast, uh, it's part book event, and it's part general assembly. Um, anyone know what a general assembly is? Raise your hand if you know what a general assembly is. You can, online or anywhere. Anyone? Alex, you know what a general assembly is, but you're just sitting there quietly. What's a general assembly, Alex? I I, I didn't quite hear that. What did you say? What did you say? I said decision-making body. Decision-making body. Yes. Okay. So, um, so uh, where do we begin? I mean, one of the reasons it's also confusing is the way I invited people here today was I did a couple different things. I made a couple personal invites. So, Yaron and Alex, Helen and Scotty are all our personal invites to come here to be part of whatever happened because I wasn't sure if anyone else would show up. And and I I'm trying to do what is like a a new type of online meeting where it's an egalitarian meeting. Um, it's a general assembly. A general assembly is something I learned about uh, in the Occupy movement. Everyone heard of the Occupy movement? No? So <laughs> well the Occupy movement was a big movement and it started in 2011. There were, um, there were, uh, it started in Zuccotti Park in New York. Uh, people occupied the space and demanded change in our, uh, the way our, um, our government works. And one of the things they did during the Occupy movement was um, they used general assemblies, which were egalitarian meetings, which were meetings attempting to give everyone in the room equal power. 
Um, Alex, who just left the camera, he helped me organize the first uh, Port Townsend General Assembly, and he actually helped me co-facilitate it at the Unitarian Fellowship here. Um, I was very active in it, and one of the things I learned during it was I felt like there was um, there was some some sort of genius in egalitarian meetings and in consensus-based meetings and in trying to do what they were doing during the Occupy movement. Um, and I learned a lot about how to facilitate egalitarian meetings. And uh, I set up on a project, and the project involved this book. Um, and basically this book was my first step in trying to explain what it is I think we need to do in the world to make the world to change it the way it needs to change. I don't know about you, um, but I think the world's got, we've got some issues in the way power works in the world. Um, and uh, we need to really be innovative about changing that. Okay, so um, the other thing I, I just wanna say, I didn't tell, I didn't say it was gonna be a book reading, in, and that's not what I told the leader. Um, I know it got put in the paper like I was gonna do a book reading, but. I told the leader I was doing a general assembly, so I was like, I was even tempted not to even read from the book during this. But, but five people showed up for a book reading, so I hope everyone will forgive me. I'm gonna actually read a, a, a part from the book. That, is there any objection to that? The, the four people I invited just to, I didn't say to come to a book reading. <laughs> All right, so, so I'm gonna do that briefly. Um, who here has written a book? Raise your hand if you've written a book before. Well, how many have written a book? Anyone else? Have you guys written a book? I'm looking at your on and Alex. No? Okay. I'm just going to jump right into the end. When you let go of your fear and seek wisdom, then wisdom rewards you with courage, strength, and confidence in a way those who live intoxicated by folly never know. Let us not merely seek mindful wisdom for ourselves only, let us seek it for the entire world. I fully accept the world as it is right now. There is much suffering. I know that every moment there is needless violence and death. And if it were happening within my view, I would likely collapse in horror. I know there is injustice per perpetrated, perpetu perpetuated by greed and intolerance. I know there is much of great value wasted. I also know there is much joy and flourishing happiness in this vast world. The world is a jungle of every type of experience, good and bad, dark and light, and to some extent, I think it will always be this way. That accepting the world as it is right now is not the same as accepting that it must remain this way forever. We can accept and love the universe exactly as it is, be in perfect equanimity while also seeking to nurture, heal, and make things better and more beautiful. So, anyone who does read this book, you're going to get a um, you're going to get a glimpse into how how I approach meditation, how I approach mindfulness, and how I approach life. And you're going to hear how these things have taken me through the world of activism and politics. And it will take you to this, um, to understand this activity that we're doing here. So I'm going to read this one part at the very end of the book, because in a way this book is just an invitation to moments like this. The Global Consensus Project. I've created a central nexus where I'm inviting people like you and I to come together and work for positive, mindful change in this world. It is called the Global Consensus Project. The goal of this project is to build platforms and host events that help facilitate positive egalitarian power change in the world. As part of this project, I've developed Hive1.net. It's an ever-evolving, crowdsourced, egalitarian, interactive, mind map social media platform. This mildly ambitious, mildly ambitious purpose of this platform is to help humanity learn to function 
as a mass egalitarian hive mind instead of a violent oppressive hierarchy. It seems to me those are the only two choices really open to a society of conscious beings. And technology has finally reached a point where a functional and healthy human hive mind can be achieved. If you want to learn more about this, then you can visit hive1.net. Once a month, I will be helping facilitate a consensus-based general assembly using the hive1.net platform. My current intention is to host these general assemblies at 10 a.m. Pacific time on the third Thursday of the month, starting in January 2017. I hope to see you there. So, this is the third Thursday of the month, so this is one of my first attempts at doing a general assembly, an egalitarian meeting, um, with what I hope is fairly mindful facilitation. Um, and I have the dual role of facilitating and also being the, the technical person, uh, and so it makes it a little more challenging. As I do these each month, I'll hope to have different, different people come in and facilitate, like Alex is a professional facilitator, anyone, and Helen is an amazing consensus facilitator, different people could could be facilitating the group. And what we're going to do now, if it's okay with everyone here, is we're going to have an egalitarian discussion. Um, and uh, so what I'd like to do is I'm going to ask questions and whoever wants to participate can participate. And if you don't want to participate, you can just pass. Um, and I have uh, two amazing friends of mine joining us online. And there might be more people joining online. Um, during this, and you get at any time, you can, if you're, you can get up and leave, of course. You, it'll just be sort of a fluid event. Um, is that okay with everyone? Um, any objection to doing that? You just sort of say, anyone freaked out or uncomfortable by this concept? Okay. Well, are you, are you going to explain my, my, my mindfulness is? What mindfulness is? Mm -hmm. I, um, I can, I could. Um, we could, I mean, we could start with that, um, any sort of questions for me, so that would be a question to pose. We could, maybe we could just first start talking about mindfulness. That could be a first topic, and maybe I wouldn't be the only one speaking. Would that be, would that be okay to approach that? Would do. <laughs> well, why don't, we, why don't we start with this? This will this will help. The first step in an egalitarian meeting is we actually do. Do we just quickly kind of just go around? Everyone who wants to can just sort of say um, your name, and you can say a little why you're here. Like, what is it that drew you here? Even if it's just Matt asked me to come. You know, whatever your answer is. Uh, so we we'll try that first. Is that, is that okay with everyone? And so, does anyone have a problem with being on camera? Because I'm actually going to turn the camera around and have it on you while you're speaking. Is anyone, everyone okay with that? <laughs> you're really nervous? Yes. Okay. Um, so let's, let's give that a try. And uh, we're gonna, we'll, start with, uh, we'll start with our camera, our television guest, if that's all right. Um, you're on. Would you like to introduce yourself and say a little bit about why you're here? Sure. <laughs> um, so first of all, originally from Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, I think I'd be uh, the first guest ever from Israel. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so very happy to represent my country. <laughs> uh, this is a of day in the project. Uh, I know Matt since uh, he was a school uh, kid in law school. Um, and I am a fan of this ever since, including the uh, new book. Um, and so I came to, uh, to join him. First of all, anything that Matt would have invited me to do, I would have come. He didn't tell me anything about why we were here, but now that I hear about it, uh, actually. Very excited. Um, I am uh, a three time entrepreneur uh, in the tech world. Um, and my 
I was specifically pioneered in uh, what's called crowdsourcing. Um, they the terms crowdsourcing is a policy the collective knowledge of all people in the network in order to produce some sort of benefit for the network. And a uh, company, the, the financial services space called Milgard, uh, harnessed the collective knowledge of people who were checking their credit card bills uh, to identify patterns and send that to everybody by sliding wrongful purchase, fraud, uh, overspending, things like that. And uh, it turned out that it was very effective in saving in the millions of dollars from everything in the network. Um, and so this concept of, first of all, in general, for any kind of uh, egalitarian system is something I feel something but also parsing our collective experience, knowledge. There's a, uh, there's a, a broad range of people. And so for us, we can put it together from our point of view is very honored to be a part of it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Alex, would you like to introduce yourself just briefly? Oops, you're muted, hold on, or somehow. That was me. Ah. Yes. Uh, yeah, so this is Al. And uh, I have uh, just having a screen for that. And uh, well, I did uh, something that I now work on like the last trip. Uh, it's about two years. And I have put uh, a lot of prints on the website. Uh, so today is that I need to really Thank you. All right, I guess I'm going to have to upgrade these speakers. We could definitely do better here. Uh, so, <laughs> we can now, let's just go in a, well, not a circle, but we'll go like person to person. Your name, what brought you here? Uh, hi, my name's Laura. Um, I'm here in Hamilton, sitting my grandma. We found out about this event um, in the newspaper, but I. Yes. What can we do here? We can move the microphone a little bit. I knew today the technical part of this would be be especially fun. Um, so I right, move the mic a little bit, and we can try to speak a little bit louder. Um, but your name is Laura, and a mindfulness educator mm -hmm. brought you here. Um, would you like to introduce Sure. Well, I saw the article in the paper. It was a nice big article, and Laura was coming to visit, so I saved it for her. I hadn't read it through, mm -hmm. and she noted that you were speaking this morning, so that's why we're here. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to know more. Great. Um. Hi, I'm Abby, and um, so I read the article in the leader, interested in the topic, uh, newish to Port Townsend, so curious about mm. who's doing what and what's up. Awesome. And I'm Virginia, and um, knowing that you're an activist, I feel that the world's in terrible turmoil, which is increasing, and I believe, and that's what I'll find out from you today, is that mindfulness or meditation um, has no room for fear, you know, and, um, and anger. And I feel that this is what we need to try to eliminate in the world and try to bring it together as a whole. Very nice. Great. Great stuff to talk about there. Hey, I'm Scotty, and uh, my name is Scott McNabb. I'm from Port Townsend, but I live in Bremerton. And, uh, I've worked with Matt before on his podcast and just talking about all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm a retired Air Force guy, photojournalist, and uh, I kind of, you know, my Port Townsend roots and my uh, 
growing up a hippie kid, it still stuck with me through that whole thing, and it was a, a, a difficult journey to spend 20 years in the military with different moral values. Um, and I feel like I've, I dedicated those 20 years, unfortunately, to the business of war, but I want to dedicate the remainder of my life to the business of peace. And um, I am a father of daughters, and I think it's important to show them that it's time for me to have something to say and to speak um, about the things that matter to me and impact all of us. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Thank you. Hello, my mm -hmm. name is John. Hello, everyone. Um, I came today for the meditation part. That's what I read about. And I'm on a journey through meditation and for the last 20 years. And I thought it'd be very interesting to hear your input on it. Uh, but now that I hear the political side, I'm even more interested. <laughs> so uh, thank you for putting this on, and uh, people from around the world can, can watch this. So thanks again. Awesome. Um, I'm Robin. Um, been more and more and more interested in activism. Um, been interested in activism since a teenager, but there wasn't anybody else doing much. And I just was frustrated as all get out that people were just accepting the status quo. And finally, this year, people are waking up and getting involved in activism. And this was just one more avenue to explore and see if this would fit for what we want to do. Great. Hi, my name is Dave. And um, as someone pointed out recently in a conversation, um, uh, as bad as the situation is, it does have the advantage that more and more people are realizing that we don't have to put up with this. We can't afford to put up with this. Uh, those of you that have children, um, they're going to be going through a hell if we don't do something very fast. And so, um, uh, this man was saying that actually this is good because now maybe people will get mad enough that they will stop um, just accepting, oh, that's okay, politicians always lie, or this or that, corruption, and just just stop accepting that as the norm and do something about it to uh, peacefully um, to put pressure on them and cause things to change. And I would also appreciate a definition of mindful meditation because I hear the word thrown around a lot, but no one's ever really explained what it means. And I've been into meditation for a long time. Um, various types of meditation, there are lots of kinds, and, um, uh, but I'm not familiar with the definition of mindful meditation. Great, all right. Hi, my name is Helen, and I'm here because Matt invited me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Matt and I are both uh, living at the Eco Village in Fort Townsend, and we're, it's a, our vision is to learn how to live in harmony with each other and with the earth. So that's our goal and we have about 25 people living there now, including mm -hmm. children. And um, we're looking at expanding as well. So I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Um, Scotty, would you yeah. be just like be the man, the camera, and okay. point it at whatever you want to? Because that will give me one less thing to think about. Sure. Is that all right? Yep. And you can point it at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're just going to keep going and do this in an egalitarian way. Uh, ideally, this would be a circle because already, um, and this is something I talk about in the book, um, power is thinking about how power works. And in a group, any sort of group setting, power is immediately at work. Um, and if you come to an event, the structure of the event uh, can, uh, will, can, will determine how power flows through the room. So like, uh, and, and I talk about this in the book, one thing that happens is, um, if you just think about how a room is laid out, you know, right, like a dinner table, who's at the head of the table right now, uh, typically an event, you know, there's a, a single speaker in the front and they have some sort of uh, expected authority over the room, how we're going to do things. Um, and a circle helps sort of uh, at least take away the physical power um, position. 
But that was too complicated for today, so I just, we went with this. But we'll keep going and we'll use, um, in facilitation there is, uh, there's two really nice egalitarian ways to let everyone share the space. One is a, uh, you just go in a circle. You just ask a question, you go in a circle. The other is stack, where you raise your hand and somebody just keeps track of who's put their hand up and puts you in order, and it's just first come, first serve. Problem with that is uh, sometimes people hog the space anyways because they keep raising their hand. Um, but for today, uh, just because this is, like I said, this is like a test event for me, I'm gonna be doing this each month. We're just gonna, we're gonna start with just using the circle. We'll just keep going in a circle. Um, that's my thought. And let's, uh, let's try that again. Let's just go in a quick circle with a quick question, with a quick answer from everyone. Okay? And it's just going to be like, and it could be anything. It could be what's your favorite color, what's, how are you feeling in one word. Um, anyone have a suggestion for a fun question to pass around to everyone? A definition of mindful meditation. <laughs> Ask everyone. To define mindful. I'm here to asking you. Oh, you want me to? <laughs> um, well, there two people did ask about that. How about I just I, I briefly talk about that? Uh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. So, uh, meditation is there's a lot of different forms of meditation. There's a lot of different definitions of it. Uh, but meditation, I believe, is just the practice of stillness. It's just stopping. Um, and it is, the more you practice that, and we can try it right now, just try being still for a few seconds. Um, is everyone okay? We'll just try that. Just, you can close your eyes and just try to be still and try to, um, and that, that's really the only request to make of yourself is you're going to be still. And anything else you can be sort of gentle with, you can let your, your mind think about things. Um, but just attempt to be still. Okay, um, so that calmed me down just doing that. Um, but just like raise your hand if you found that at all difficult. Okay. Everyone else has found that that was easy? I find it, and maybe it comes differently to different people, but um, some people find stillness incredibly difficult. And I'm one of the people that find it extremely difficult. It's one of the reasons I, probably the, one of the reasons I'm drawn to meditation and mindfulness is because I'm a naturally, incredibly intense um, person. And that means uh, that can get you going very, at a very high speed, high energy all the time. And so I was drawn to meditation because it teaches you the exact opposite of that. Not necessarily lowering your intensity, but it just holds you still. So instead of like a boat where there's massive winds just like throwing the sailboat, say, all over the water, it teaches you how to have a, a still, elegant sail that just harnesses the energy of life and um, you're able to sail it or surf it. I like to jump from different metaphors to different metaphors. But um, so that's meditation. Meditation teaches you stillness. And I, I basically believe that um, mindfulness is just awareness. Just, it's just like your mind is full. What's it full of? It's, if the, it's full of awareness. That's what a mind is. It's awareness. It's consciousness. Information um, and memories and all that, that's just data. 
But what, you're, what makes your mind actually be a mind is that you're alive and that you're aware. And so mindfulness is just your awareness. And your awareness has different, um, there's different things that go on with your awareness. It can be, uh, it can be just like I said with the body and your energy. If you're all fidgety and your energy is going all over the place, your mind can go all over the place. And it jumps all around like this, like from topic to topic. So meditation helps you be still, that helps you learn to have your mind still, which helps you learn to have a different relationship with your awareness. So your awareness can be focused and can, you can focus it on something and um, then you suddenly realize your awareness is like a, it's like a laser, you know, and the more you can sharpen it, you actually, when you look at something, you can just like, um, really, really dig into it. It's like your, it's like your awareness burns into it like a laser revealing new things. And so it gives you a, a new power. And then people can feel that because it, and this may sound kind of silly, but like that awareness comes out of your eyes. And so a really, really mindful, still person, you can feel it when they look you in the eye because they'll be like, they'll really be holding your gaze and they'll be like, what is happening? They're looking into my soul, you know? And, um, so that's, that's mindfulness and meditation. And I do talk about in the book how to practice these things and, and how they end up, um, they really interacted with my life and my goals. Okay, so how about, uh, so what should we do now? I feel like we could, we could circle, we could just ask questions and I could answer like that. Um, I was going to do another circle. Uh, I'm open to the circle. Okay, sure. circle question. Um, well, since and shall I just pick one, or does anyone want to suggest a, a circle question? Looking at my, how about just a uh, quick one? Was there a suggestion from the Alex from our guests? On it? On, uh, anyone else on what is meant by mindfulness? Hmm. Uh, shall we do that? If we just go a quick circle. What is mindfulness to you? Is that okay? Um, I'm just going to go in a circle and just because that's coming, we'll just start here. Sure. <laughs> um, for me, mindfulness is just an awareness of the experience that I'm having in the moment that I'm in um, through meditation or throughout life, just moments throughout the day. Awareness. awareness thoughts. Well, it's, it's a learning experience. This is the first time. Well, I've been talking a little bit more. But this circle is nice. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, it's awareness, paying attention to what's happening internally in response to what's happening externally. So for me, it would be mindfulness would be like if I'm doing the dishes, I focus on the dishes, not have my mind wander. Or if I'm weeding, I focus on the weeds and not have my mind wander because that's the biggest problem that I have. My mind is like broken, it goes all over the place. So it focuses on that moment. Um, I guess we'll just sit down here. <laughs> yes. um, to me, mindfulness, mindfulness is about empathy and about uh, being able to put yourself in other people's place and feel what they might feel or consider what they might consider. And I think that there's so much that can be done beyond giving facts about other sides and other opinions. But if we can find empathy, and, and, and if other sides can find empathy toward us, I think that's where growth is going to happen on an exponential level. Hmm. Uh, it's been used already, but I, I definitely think it's focus. Focus hmm. on, on your, the individual situation at that moment. It's letting go of the worries about the
uh, future and the regrets about the past. Just let go of the future and the past and concentrate on the now and um, hopefully on the positive of now. That uh, it's a beautiful world and a beautiful life. And there may be a lot of bad stuff going on, but there's a lot of good too. Just concentrate on that. Um. I got interested in such things in the early 70s and um, uh, as a result of a chain of circumstances became an instructor for the Silva method um, which in involves uh, mindful meditation from the sound of it and um, also looked into transcendental meditation and more recently uh, Soaring Crane Qigong uh, and some other things. And to me, the, um, the, what, how I would define uh, what I think you're referring to is um, to learn to focus your mind, learn to be here now, as Bob Ram Das used to say. Um, and when you, in the training, we often tell people that if you find that your mind is going off somewhere else, don't get mad about it, don't get defensive about it, don't, don't feel like, oh, I failed. Just sort of, oh, that's interesting. Now let's come back to what we're doing. Uh, unless it's something like the house is on fire or something you need to deal with, then that's fine. But, but otherwise, let's just come back to what we're doing. It's not, uh, it's not a bad thing. It's just uh, an interesting phenomenon. Let's just come back to what we're doing. And just keep repeating that. And I think it, um, uh, most people find, uh, in my experience, everybody's been able to uh, get into um, a far, far better focus than they, than they were able to previously. And as you say with your laser analogy, that does give you uh, powers that you didn't know you had. Also, um, visualization, and um, I, I think when you're meditating, when you're um, at, at deep levels of mind, which usually is associated with lower brain frequency and such, um, that opens powers that are not um, recognized or understood by most of Western society. And um, you have the ability to do all sorts of superpowers that you didn't realize you could do. Um, so it's a very valuable um, skill to, to nurture and uh, just keep working at it. Find, find a meditation technique. I've, I've had uh, people that were into yoga as a meditation technique or, or other, there, there are lots of them. There are hundreds or thousands of them. And so find one that resonates with you and, um, and work with it. I, I enjoyed the Silva method. I'm not affiliated with it in any way in the last 40 years, but, um, uh, but there are lots of good ones out there. And I, and I think that um, clearly we get what we think about. Um, I think Henry Ford or Edison or somebody said, if you, uh, if you think, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. <laughs> and um, I think the more energy we put into the negative stuff, the more, the more minutes we think about uh, how terrible, whatever, political, environmental, uh, personal, whatever, if we, if we dwell on the... Uh, the negative stuff, we're just adding energy to that. We're just making that more likely to happen. So I think uh, if we find ourselves doing that, as I said earlier, uh, to say, okay, I don't really want to go that way. What I want to do is stay on the positive and, and bring your, gently bring yourself back to visualizing the positive solution that you want to see. Like, like they've said many times recently, uh, become the, the change you want in the universe. Well, um, I think to me, mindfulness has to do with um, being able to witness your mind. Because, it, you know, it seems to jump all over and think all kinds of thoughts. And so, if um, I can be mindful of my mind, then I think that's where I can become present. Um, and as you say, it's not about chastising yourself for not being present, but simply returning to the present moment when you notice that you're not there, which is most of the time for me. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I think also I think of the analogy of a, 
of a magnifying glass where you're taking the light and focusing it down into a, a point. Um, so that, uh, and what you're focusing on is what you um, are aware you're focusing on. You know you are focusing on rather than being unaware, unconscious of what's happening in your mind. Uh, Alex, would you like to say something about mindfulness? Yeah, um, I don't claim, I'm definitely not an expert in meditation. Um, I uh, have looked into mindfulness, though, just in terms of because it's become such a, uh, a, a pop term. Um, and and what, I, what I think is a better word for it is the word noticing. And it's kind of like what Helen just said about witnessing. Um, and I just would add to, it's not just watching your mind, but it's watching, uh, it's being, it's paying attention to, it's, it's cultivating a moment-to-moment -moment awareness of the contents of your consciousness. And so that, and what I've found is that it basically comes down to four categories of things that you can be aware of. And it's basically your thoughts, uh, sensory data coming in through your eyes, your ears, you know, what you smell, what you feel, uh, your physical sensations, and your environment. Um, so it's sort of, sort of feeling everything or noticing everything that you can be aware of. You know, the pressure of your back on the back of your chair, uh, the light in the room, the itch in your eye, um, you know, whatever it is, the emotions, and kind of noticing uh, those different categories. What are the emotions? What are the thoughts? What, what sensory data and what uh, um, uh, um, physical sensations? So it's just you know paying attention to everything that you can pay attention to. Great, you're on. I like that definition. Um, I'll just add that ever since I can um, remember myself, um, every single day before school, my father would part from me by saying, be wakeful. Um, and he would even raise his, would even have a hand symbol for it so that if we were far away, he didn't have to yell, he would just go like this. Raising his pinky, he would say, be wakeful. And what he was, I mean, this is literally since pre-K, okay? Um, every single day. And what he was saying was basically, be a sponge. Uh, take everything in, don't let things kind of just go by you, but be a sponge to, to every moment and sort of heighten your consciousness, both to your, from your external world, what's happening you know, around you, but also internally. Um, I like the four categories, the way Alex broke it down. Um, and I realized today that what my father was saying when he was saying be wakeful, and I love that word, wakeful, um, is actually to be mindful. So I guess I've been practicing it without knowing for a good part of my life. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, so we can now, because we're being egalitarian, we're going to pick the next topic. Um, so, any suggestions? Anyone can, you can just, you guys can raise your hand. Oh, is that, you're on, you're raising your hand, do you have a topic? Uh, yeah. I think it's actually, um, would be interesting to discuss the virtues, the, the pros and cons of a purely egalitarian system. Um, I, you know, I, I, I take it, I come to it from a perspective of um, having built companies and being a CEO who was trying to build a very flat hierarchy where I wasn't dictating anything and letting everyone equally sort of contribute um, towards the building of a company or a product um, or solving problems. And there are times when that works very effectively, it makes everybody feel great. And there are times when that slows the system down to an absolute halt uh, and gets you gridlock, where you need a leader to step up and say, okay, I've heard everybody's opinion, and now let's go this way or that way. Um, so I'd love to discuss that topic in general, consider the fact that it's the foundation of the discussion here. Awesome, okay, so there's one suggestion by Iran to talk about the pros and cons of the idea of an egalitarian system. Um, so I want to pause and just see if there's any other topics that people would like to suggest 
uh, before we dive, just, just pick one. Any other? It could really be anything. Okay, so this is more of a comment okay. than a suggestion. So I'm. So I would say that um, in terms of the egalitarian model, I had lived at a retreat center based on the Findhorn model for a few years, and um, and would agree. The what with model? Our, pardon? The what model? It is Findhorn, different. which was a community, which is and was a community based in Scotland, started in the late '60s. But anyway, I don't need to go into that. But that was what this retreat center was based on in Northern California. Um, and so I would agree that, yes, sometimes the egalitarian model takes a lot of time. And I would also say as a leader, I've used it, but also feel like there are times that a different style of decision making is appropriate. So, but all, all that to just say, I'm, um, I'm wondering, given that what we came for, I'm wondering, like, what were your goals as the leader? Because I guess I was interested in the topic of mindfulness and uh, uh, revolutionary mindfulness. So, so I'm just a little confused or where we're going. And, and I am wondering what your goals were since you said the article that brought some of us in didn't really represent what you were wanting to do. Because, yeah. So, and that's with no disrespect to you, your comment, you're I'm just, you know, sure. just kind of sure. wondering what we're doing. Um, so, uh, we'll pause, so we'll go ahead and pause, because I know this is, this is a very, there's a good reason you're confused, because this is definitely um, some new things, different things going on mm -hmm. right now. This is like the intersection of a lot of different sort of worlds for me in this event. Um, but my goal was, uh, my goal was, it was like I sort of read in the, in, the, in the book, my intention is to do a meeting like this once a month. Um, and uh, I want to, I want to practice, have us practice doing egalitarian uh, uh, meetings that are open to the entire world. And that's why this is a very important piece of it that we, um, this is actually a, a video conferencing software that 50 people could drop in. So this could, and we're, we're live streaming this on the internet, so people could be watching um, on Facebook Live, and the video will be out there. So basically, here's one way to e explain what I'm trying to do, because it, it's sort of really connected to meditation and mindfulness. So if you think of meditation and mindfulness as when you are still, you're trying. Uh, I think of that sometimes as I'm trying to go into a uh, like a sacred space, a sacred moment, and where you can find um, where you can rest and really find focus and calmness. And so, in a when you add more people to your presence, that can disrupt you being in that sacred stillness. Because other people, it's so powerful having another person in the room with you. I don't know what it is exactly, I don't understand it fully, but having a bunch of people in the room adds a ton more something. Everyone, everyone agree who's tried to meditate, it's really high, hard to be in a meditative space with a bunch of people around you, especially if they're not meditating. If, they, if they're trying to meditate, that's different, but otherwise, it's like people like pull us out of this space. And another thing that pulls us out of that space is the way people behave in a room. And that's power. It's, it's my behavior over here won't affect Scotty and disrupt him unless I'm using my powers in some way that affect him. And one way to do that is talking. Just talking is taking space. It's like my voice fills this room fills our ears and it's like imposing itself on you every moment that I'm talking. And some people it really is imposing when they're talking. It really... So what I'm trying to do is is help us sort of practice creating space together that can stay sacred. That can stay beautiful and peaceful. And then if we can create it in one room with and we can open that room to the entire world, we can just make that space bigger and bigger. Every month, we'll add more people. And that's, um, I've built this platform to allow us 
to allow like a million people could join this conversation. The, the platform has, um, allows everyone in the platform to do what's, what, you, what we learn in the Occupy movement, sparkle fingers. Everyone remember seeing this in a meeting in a room of people and everyone says, everyone likes something and people go like this. Anyone mm -hmm. seen this before? It's, um, it's, a, it's from the, they came out of actually anarchist groups because they really care about everyone in the room being equal. And so they say, if you like what's being said by the speaker, you can go like this. It just means instead of applauding, because applause interrupts the speaker. It sends power. So this is just a gentle way to say, yeah, I like what's going on, or I don't like what's being said, um, or I'm on the fence. Um, and so the, the platform I built allows a million people to do that. And you just see the colors on the platform of green. If everyone is going, yay, I like what's going on, or I don't like what's going on. And that gives, um, it sort of spreads the communication power out to everyone participating. And there's other little techniques like that I'm doing. And every month, as we get, as I get better at facilitating this, and people that are interested help make this um, happen, then hopefully we'll have more mindful uh, meetings, and it can sort of spread like a virus and take over the world. And then we'll have an alternative power system to to say what we want our governments to do. That's that's sort of the, the crazy, crazy ambitious sort of like. So as I agree with you, you're um, <clears throat> in the experimental stages and searching for something that you don't know exactly what's going to happen, but you're hoping that you can get rid of the current technique of top-down hierarchical power and allow people to be more free to express themselves than they have been in the past. Yeah, that's a great way to to say it. And I think it's a it's not to replace higher, you know, it's not like we'll replace our government, but how about we have like, you know, just way more power and influence in the masses of people and what we actually think and feel. Because um, really, if you think about power, like in the U.S., say, over one government, um, if all the people just realized we have total control over this country, uh, we just need everyone in the country to agree on a, you know, the words for a change to the Constitution, and we can all vote and change the Constitution. If we just learn to do this, to do have meetings, we learn how to have everyone in the country feel like there's a safe space. I can go and I can speak, I can be heard, I won't be attacked, I won't be threatened, I'll be able to, to communicate and learn, and we'll be able to come up with agreements for what we want the laws to be, what we want our leaders to do. The only reason we don't do that is because we allow ourselves to be uh, divided by you know, silly arguments over silly things, um, rather than focus on basic problems like money in politics. I bet everyone in the country would agree we should not have money controlling our governments. Um, Right, left, doesn't matter. And we could change that if we just all agreed on like a single constitutional amendment. But why don't we do that? Because we allow mass media to control the conversation. And the mass media is controlled by money. So we need to create a new type of mass media. A mass media that is completely crowd-sourced and crowd-controlled. And I guess that's another way to look at this. This is sort of like a seed of a new type of media which would be, you would enter the space and you know you could talk, or you could just listen. Yeah. So, um, David. Um, uh, Silva did, Jose Silva did develop the technique that I used to teach. Um, did a lot of research. He was an electronics technician originally, and, and so he was a fairly nerdy kind of guy. And, and he, he um, proved to his satisfaction that um, when you get a group of people, this is addressing your thing of it changes the dynamics when there are other people in the room. When you get a group of people that are all uh, working towards the same goal, that are all visualizing the same solution, um, that it uh, increases uh, asymptotically or exponentially. Uh, you don't, if you have three people, you don't just have three times as much energy. You've got something far more than that. Mm -hmm. And um, 
when Transcendental Meditation was uh, in the early 70s, when I knew several people that were excited about that, they felt when they got a million people as TM graduates that that combined meditative force would prevent us from having wars. Well, it didn't quite work out that way. But I still believe that the phenomena is accurately, has been accurately proven that when you get a lot of people that are all on a synchronized project, um, that you get a lot more power. Uh, it changes from a candle to a flashlight to a searchlight uh, as you as you add more people to the to the common goal. Uh, and is is it Ron in Tel Aviv? You're Ron. Yeah. yeah. Um, to address Ron's original question, personally, I believe that uh, uh, they both have advantages. I'm a very egalitarian kind of person. Um, I, I pay just as much attention to the street sweeper as I do to the bank president, um, or I try to to the best of my ability. And um, uh, I think that, that is, that's how I was raised as an American. I was told by our propaganda machine that we were a democratic country where everybody's vote counted and we were all equal from a vote standpoint. Um, but. Uh, Without putting on my tinfoil hat, I think that in the last two years we've seen that that isn't actually what's happening, that, that uh, votes are not counted correctly, that the system is designed so that some people have far more power uh, than other people, far more, vastly more power. And um, I think that's unhealthy for the planet. So um, all of these things, I think, can be combined. They're all sort of disparate meditation, politics, you know, but, but they really all can be used, they're all part of how the universe works and they all can be used to save us. All right, so, um, so I don't know if anyone in here is a group facilitator, well, I know Helen's time, but if anyone was actually watching sort of what happened in the room right there, it's a, you know, I had originally asked, uh, what topics should we talk about? And we, we started to sort of make a list of topics and then we just sort of went into some topics, which um, I just point that out because it's one of the things as a, as a facilitator, just sort of watch, that's power, you know? It's the ability to change the topic in the room and it just sort of organically happened and it was great, wonderful uh, sort of topics to go into. But I wanna step back and ask, um, I'm just gonna give us an opportunity, what do we, what do we want to talk about next? What do we What do we want to go into? We want to continue with. Uh, Yaron had suggested go into the pros and cons of trying to do things egalitarian, and we've touched on that. Um, we, we we did the tangent onto what my goals were in this event. Um, we could literally um, we could go into any any direction. Um, we could talk more about activism. I could read to you another passage from my book if we wanted to do that. I would like to say a little bit more about pros and cons, um, just, just real quick. Um, I, I think there are so many pros to it, and, and you, you can think about collective consciousness or conscious, you know, and, and how we can all work together and kind of make things happen in a, in a way that, that we're all linked to. If we let that link happen, then there's, there's so much strength in that, and it's really undeniable. Um, I, I think, though, the, the con is is that if we don't have an agenda of some sort or another, not an agenda as in a political agenda or anything like that, but but an idea or an outline of, what, of a direction, then everyone comes from these different groups that all have great intentions. And so they're, they're like, okay, yeah, but I want to say what I have to say with my group, and we have our own points that we want to stress. And so what happens is then it gets muddled and it gets, it gets to the point where there's game fighting, and you lose the value of that connection because everyone's trying to get their thing to the top. And if there's some way to to recognize that and 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 have everyone check their own agendas at the door and and work toward a, a goal together, I think that would be very useful. If, if I, would, I mean, thank you. I mean, that I guess when I said to you, what were your goals? maybe that's more what I meant, you know, in terms of an agenda, because, you know, hearing now, I'm realizing 
I probably can't, I came maybe more for con the content of what I thought, and I'm realizing you're much more one talking about process. Mm -hmm. and, and although, you know, I agree, you know, process is important and how content is discussed and delivered, but I realize that's, that when I said I was confused, that's my confusion. I thought there was, a, the content was the issue, and I'm realizing you're wanting to talk about process. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's what, and so maybe what you're saying kind of ties what I'm trying to think about together is like, you know, what, on the, what are we doing? And I'm also aware that perhaps this is what your agenda or goals are, is just to allow for a free flowing of when there isn't real a leader. Although, again, I, I think of you as the leader, even if it's a leaderless group, because you called it together. So. Yes, that is very, very well described. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and this is literally one of the things I've learned uh, in my meditation and mindfulness practice is trying to be um, more comfortable in the unknown, uncertain, unplanned, um, trying not to control everything that's happening, and trying not to be fixated on like a specific goal for like even today. Um, and that is another thing that's sort of, for me, that's like a lifelong sort of challenge is uh, um, I'd like to, I like to be in control. I like to know what I'm doing. I like to have a plan, especially if I'm going to be in front of people and speaking. Um, but when you're trying to do incredibly crazy, ambitious things, sometimes you just got to like pick a couple things you can control. And so... And, uh, and I, I like feel, I literally feel this um, anxiety of worry of like disappointing anyone who has shown up here or participate in any way, expect, you know, there's like everyone people expecting things and it's like, am I going to deliver that thing? And uh, hoping everyone will be like compassionate that I'm trying to, this guy's apparently trying to do something, it's different. Probably not like any other book reading you've attended, right? <laughs> hey, Matt. Yeah. If, if I could suggest, it seems that uh, the component here um, of the way this type of uh, discussion was promoted is the key to setting the expectation, right? So I don't know what was in this article, but I think you can you know, very fairly say that you want, and you need to find the right words to describe it, but say that you want to try to create this beautiful space, this place where people can just free form, talk to each other in this still, safe way. Uh, and that is the agenda, to simply get together and free flow, uh, communicate with each other uh, in this way that you're trying to, to experiment with rather than be specific on the type of topic or uh, um, that would bring people for specific content, like I forgot the name of the lady who was saying. Um, I, I think the, the experiment itself is interesting enough. I don't think people need to check their agendas at the door. We all might have topics that we want to discuss, and this is a forum where we can bring it up and have other human beings react to it, and that's, that's quite a beautiful thing. That in its own right is a reason to come to this sort of space. Awesome. Thanks. So better advertising next time. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, and where should we go from here? Uh, any suggestion on topic? I mean, you could ask me a question and I will answer it, or we could uh, do another Oh, oh, we have two, yes. Well, how would you word that new advertisement? That would be, how would you actually put that out to the community? Um, great topic. This is a great, great platform, but how would you word that out there next time? Yeah. You're, well, you're what, actually asking me yeah, what, what, you know, when you went to the leader or any other way that you advertised, I got it through the leader. But however you go out there, what words would you use? Why don't we help him write those words together? Why don't we write those words, all of us together? Like right now? Right now. <laughs>
we could do that. Um, uh, let me see what um, let me see what Helen was going to say before we dive into a, a, a specific task like that. Um, it seems to me that you asked a question of what topic do we want to discuss, mm -hmm. and uh, Iran said, "Let's talk about the pros and cons of." of egalitarianism and then we went different places with that um, do we want to choose that topic or do we want to choose another topic um, I, I noticed that sitting in rows as you pointed out and seeing the backs of people's heads doesn't allow me to see what people are thinking <laughs> and having you sit above us <laughs> is also a power differential. Uh, you know all this stuff already, but um, I think if we were to go back to that original question of, I mean, Iran, had, if I'm saying that Yaron. right. Yaron. Yaron, Yaron. sorry. Uh, suggested a Different topic. Country. Do we want to talk about that or do we want to talk about something else? Okay. I um, find this fascinating experiment, and I'm glad there's only 10 people here. <laughs> uh, you asked us originally to go around and everybody say something, introduce themselves. If you started out with a million, it's a physical impossibility. Yeah. Um, so even ramping it up just a little bit from this small group of 10 seems to be a mind-boggling difficulty. Uh, it's an interesting topic, and I'd love to see where it can go. But that's going to be your biggest problem: is scaling it up and trying. We've got enough topics here. Two or three is is more than we can really handle. Uh, if we really open it up to activism versus mindfulness versus whatever, it it just becomes unmanageable. Uh, so we'll call that the uh, the topic of scaling up. How do you scale up something like this? And I have I have a lot of uh, uh, I can talk about that. I have a lot of ideas about that. Um, uh, okay, so we had a number of different things we could that just came up. We could word. Um, we could figure out how we're uh, or how I'm going to advertise this event? How can I describe it so people know what they're getting into a little bit more? Um, uh, Helen had us, she was just sort of checking in on that we've been sort of jumping topic to topic and basically asking us, do we want to be focused on a single topic? Um, and then the topic of scaling. Um, so, uh, why don't I'll, I'll just I'll just touch on like those topics, and you can raise your hand if you have something you want to say about them. Does that sound okay, to everyone? Any objection to that? And Scotty, if one of them like waves their hand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the the how would you word an ad for this? I'm going to suggest we not go into that. I, trust me, I did not say I was doing a book reading. I did describe it differently to, to Charlie at the leader, and he just put in what he wanted to put in the leader, which is, a, you know, that's a interesting moment, you know, when you say, hey, could you, this is what I'm doing, and they just say something completely differently. You're like, ah, that was so helpful. Now, <laughs> um, Actually, I didn't think it was a book reading, if you want yeah. the truth. Oh. I really didn't, <clears throat> I didn't, didn't even see that. Uh, I just thought I was going to come and get your viewpoint to help me with, uh, you know, mindfulness and oh, great. mindfulness. That's really what I thought. Great. Well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> um, and then I'll just respond briefly to the scaling. This sort of, I think it's come up with, you know, how do we do this on a big scale? Um, I think uh, the way you go is you start to make this an open space. If anyone knows, an open space is a, is a specific type of group event, and you can have any number of people come to an open, like 100, 200 people come to an open space, and it's uh, facilitated. And so when you come, uh, you the first thing you ask is, 
anyone that wants to facilitate talking about a specific topic, you list your topic out. And so it's like, uh, so you list out the topics, and then you, one way you do it, you have, so imagine you have like 200 people here, you have, um, people are listing topics on the wall, they're writing, I want to talk about activism, or mindfulness, or amending the constitution, or starting a public kitchen in town, or whatever your, um, starting a new political party, whatever your topic is, and then everyone just goes over and they write their name under the topic they're interested in. And then, at a specific time, like the facilitators ring a bell or something, and each of these topics is given a space, you know, like under that tree or in that room. And so everyone breaks for an hour, and you go and you talk, you go to the group you want to talk to, and you hope within each of those groups they're facilitated in a decent way. But um, but that's so it's basically a way of you take the energy of any size group, you ask them what do you want to talk about. That gives you a bunch of like pots for gathering that energy. Then you say to everyone, jump into the pot you want to jump into. And they go into it and they churn away and they, they come out and they might have uh, each group take some notes. And so they can come and they can post their notes from each group by their thing. And so if you went to one thing and not another, you come out and you, um, you can read about what happened to the other groups. And if they have a, a follow-up meeting or something, they might have it listed there and you could go to that. And so, um, so that's kind of the way I see these. As they get bigger, that's exactly right. You can't circle anymore. What you do is you can do limited things as the whole group is together um, with stack. And some people get to speak to the whole group. But then you can break up into small groups in a very egalitarian way. And it's very important in those, in those small groups, you're never locked in the group. Um, uh, it, they say um, in an open space meeting, one of their, their big things is you're not locked in the room. You come in, you can come in, you can leave, you can like hang at the door. You don't have to sit and join uh, any group. It's a very, it's really about creating safety for everyone there. So you don't. So I, I don't like feeling trapped. And I hope no one, if anyone just wants to leave this, please feel free. Um, but do you feel that you have enough pods? <clears throat> Can you name the pods that you see that have come out from this group? Are you saying, um, are you saying pods or what? Well, <clears throat> I mean, how would you identify all the different things that have been said? Subject? Mm -hmm. So you said if somebody makes a suggestion and then they write it down and then <clears throat> they take their group somewhere to discuss these topics. Right. Yeah. If if we were doing an open space, we would have facilitated I would have facilitated it differently. So it would have been, what is your topic? And I would have written it up here. And so you sort of that's part of the, the how the facilitation helps the group keep their focus yeah. and to stay together is the facilitator. Uh, takes over what's said and puts makes it visual. So it's now it's shared information. We have this group on this topic, this group, and you can see how many people have signed up. And then you can, and then you break up into the room. And, well, and this, that's what I'm asking. What are the groups? Yeah, we're not. Uh, I don't. Think, don't think we're going to try to do that today. So we're not going to break up. I mean, we could wanted to. I wasn't uh, going to be that ambitious for today's. Um, I thought we would just stay in here and see what happens, you know. Um, is that, that's okay. Sure. Sure. I'm kind of interested in the opposite. Um, I'm interested in activism. I look online and there's thousands of groups. There's one who's saving the bees and another one is working with the plastic bottle things and another one's working with Planned Parenthood, and another one's working with defeating Trump, and there's thousands of them. And when I look at all these, and I want to be involved in all of them, and I haven't got the energy for all of them, and I'm thinking that the what we are opposed to, the people that are currently in power, seem to have a picture of where they're going, and a drive in that direction, and 
part of what they're doing is dividing the rest of us. And they've got us so divvied up with so many different projects that the power is diluted. And I wish there was some way that we could have the Women's March 3 million people triple it, get it up to 10 million people, and every time the Congress comes up with a new bill, those 10 million people can react in unison to that one bill. Or somehow that we could get, um, get away from the division that the people in power are successfully uh, diluting our power with. And I have a clue how you go about doing that. But I'm just so frustrated with bees versus uh, well, water versus Trump versus Planned Parenthood. It, it's um, that was that was my point before um, as well. I, that was what I was trying to say. I wasn't saying don't have your own agenda. Everyone's going to have their own agenda. Every group's going to have their own agenda. What I was talking about is if there's some semblance of structure to what you're talking about in your group, then then if there's a way to check the very um, minor things, if there's if, if you stay focused on that sense that uh, semblance of structure of what goes into that conversation, rather than and not this topic and not that topic and, and muddling it down. That's that was my point. Not to not to say that we shouldn't have agendas. Everyone should. Everyone does. If you've ever talked to a, a person in the media, Matt, um, <laughs> you would realize that that writer has his own agenda and probably has a story written before he even interviews you or she. And I, I know that because I was a journalist, you know, so they just fill in the blanks, that's a quote, you know, and um, it's not always fair. But getting to the main point, though, is that um, if there were a way with the hive to have some sort of like, okay, this is the structure of what we're talking about here, so that the groups weren't trying to to bring in their own their own um, different message, so that it, it's good to have diversity of message. But if we're talking about one thing, and it all gets chicken down to bees and Trump and all that stuff, and Trump with bees in his mouth, and, you know, as Homer might say. Um, um, then, then you're you might lose focus like I just did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got two hands up. So first okay, so start. my question is going back to your book, Revolutionary Mindfulness. Um, I'm not too sure after hearing all of this what your object was. I mean, is it being the connectivist in your book, which I don't know what's in it yet because I haven't read it. Were you thinking more of um, getting one s subject, one topic, and then focusing on that as a mindfulness meditation to bring the power, like you were saying, the power to, um, you know, the peacefulness, the power to, like, say, finances in the government? Um, I'm not, I, I guess I kind of got lost a little bit there. How would you do that? I mean, are, is it because we would all be thinking of basically the same thing and putting it out there into the universe, or what? <laughs> Does that make sense? I mean, yes, and is it okay if I just answer, try to reply to it sure. while it's still fresh in my mind because it was a lot you just said? Um, you know, I think. Uh, Mindfulness is, it's, well, it's, it's, I've started to realize that my mind is like a group of people. It's like there's 10 people, like that movie Inside Out, if you've seen that, where there's like five mm -hmm. beings inside your mind. I really feel like that is a good metaphor for the way the mind works. There's, <coughs> there's part of you that um, might feel like, um, that wants to do something, and there's another part of me saying, don't do it that way, or you're doing it wrong, or do something else. And it's, so mindfulness, in a way, is learning how to facilitate your own brain, um, which I realized it's, I try to be egalitarian in my mind, and I try to just listen to each part of myself's needs, and then if every part of myself feels heard, then we can agree on basic directions in life, like we want happiness. We're, everyone in my brain is greedy. I'm going for a happy life, 
And so we can have general agreement on what things I need to do to achieve that. In a way, I feel like it's the exact same exercise with people. Like, if we start with a single country, you just need everyone to have their needs heard. They need to feel they can, they can say what they need to say. They will be heard. They will be respected. Everyone will be equally valued. You know, just like, I mean, I, I don't see any other solution. There's no other solution that's reasonable, I think, than equality. You just, it has to be the basic principle. Otherwise, you're saying, I want some people to have more, and then you're just creating an opportunity for conflict. So, um, so yeah, and if we just did that, if we just all were able to uh, just communicate enough together to express our needs and pick off the easy, low-hanging fruit of basic changes we could make in the world, there are some very easy, low-hanging fruit that are not divisive, like getting money out of politics, or even um, trying to end hunger or homelessness. I mean, there's some really easy things if we just took the power to do that. Um, and in the democracies of the world, we do have the power to do that. We, in the in a legitimate democracies, you know, I spent, and I mentioned this in the book, I went to Hong Kong during their uh, umbrella revolution where they're, they're fighting to try to get an actual democracy. They don't have real democracy. Their leaders are chosen by Beijing, um, by China, um, and then they like to vote on them. The China says you can vote between these three people to be your leader. They're like, that's not quite good enough, and they're trying to get actual, they want to be able to nominate their own potential uh, president. And so they, uh, they blocked, uh, they took over Hong Kong, the protesters. They blocked major highways, major intersections for like three months. Um, and uh, it was led by students, and um, during the first three weeks, uh, the police in Hong Kong were escalating uh, tactics. Um, they were doing pepper spray, and the students and everyone came out in raincoats and umbrellas and in goggles, and they were just stood there in the pepper spray while they were being flooded by it. So the police, first time I think in the history of Hong Kong, they, they shot tear gas at the students. And um, students spread and came back. Like, and the next day they came back in mass numbers. Um, and once that happened, that's when I was like, I'm going there. Um, I, I bought a ticket, told my wife. Um, they, there are students getting pepper sprayed in Hong Kong, essentially by China. Essentially by uh, China. There hasn't been a democracy protest in Asia like this since Tiananmen Square. So I told my wife, I'm going to go there. I don't know what I can do. Um, but I thought, I'll, you know, if nothing else, I could be a witness. And so I bought, like, I went to Costco and bought a GoPro camera. And so that I was like, I'm going to be decked out in cameras because if I get arrested by the Chinese police or something, I'm going to be at least recording it. Um, and I was seriously wondering if, um, if China was going to send in tanks, because that's what they did in Tiananmen Square. Uh, that's how they cleared the protest. Um, so I went there and I was there for a week and I met uh, people on the streets there. And it's, it's interesting. It sort of connects back to, I, I was just following how they were trying to transform their country. And even there, you saw leaders had to sort of come up out of the um, out of the movement, you know, they had like five leaders that were doing a lot of speaking mm -hmm. and they were trying to figure out how to give more of the students, more people voices. And so they were sort of struggling, say thousands of people. And they, you know, they struggled with that. And, and so I feel like we now have the technology to solve that problem. You don't have to, you know, when you get a thousand people interested in something, it doesn't have to like come out to one leader. We can use technology like this. If we just get better at it, you know, and we'll get, we'll work out the kinks, we'll bring speakers that have two speakers that work, not just one, which is just sort of funny to me. Um, and we'll have better microphones, but we can solve this problem and create spaces that are um, less, uh, far less easy for individuals to rise up and be the leaders. Because um, if you have that opportunity, people with that love being leaders will will become the leaders, and they tend to be, you know, people that like being leaders tend to have all sorts of character flaws, you know, because they like bossing people around. Um, 
So we need to create an environment where people that <coughs> don't like being leaders, don't even like speaking in front of groups, feel safe to do that. And just feel like, I can go in there and I can talk and I'll be heard. And it's not dominated by some arrogant person or some... Yeah. Okay, so now I'm, I'm a little bit lost where we were. Okay. I just want to say, uh, so far I think you're being pretty successful because I'm one of those people who tends to not speak up. <laughs> and I have been able to speak up here, so... Wonderful. Let me see, so where... What should we talk about? Where, I don't know, are we just keeping the stack open? And please raise your hand, Alex and Yaron, if you would like to jump in. Yes. Um, Robin talked about in Massachusetts when she was growing up that there was a, was it facilitator, what was the word, consensus? Yeah. That instead of a democracy, as I understand democracy, uh, there was a person, that your father or somebody, that worked on consensus? Could you explain that one for us? Oh, consensus was learned from the Indian tribes, and instead of having majority rule, they had a consensus technique. And so, in, a, in that system, you put up some solutions, and if anybody doesn't like any of those solutions, you keep looking for a new solution. Um, you don't just say, well, 10 people are happy and you're miserable, well, you don't count. That person has continued input until they figure out some way of making that person content with the results. It doesn't mean that everybody gets everything they want, but it does mean that nobody gets the majority ran down their throat. And it's very, very difficult. It's not an easy process but it is uh, extremely beneficial and successful if you can uh, learn that technique and make sure that everybody's heard, everybody's included in the solution. You just think outside the box, find another solution. It doesn't have to be A or B, look for Z. I think this is kind of what your purpose is from what I understand, I could be totally off. But you're trying to figure out how to facilitate, how to um, allow the population to have a voice and get things done. And as has been pointed out several times, um, the people that, that don't want us to get those things done because they have their own agenda are pretty good at fragmenting us and distracting us into who can use what bathroom and, well, we've got to save the bees and we've got to do this and we can't do that. And, and um, I think it was uh, from where I was, how I observed in the last two years, it was pretty polarizing. People were strongly for and against. And, uh, and I, I'm using this as an analogy like your laser. Um, and whether you uh, liked Bernie Sanders or you hated thought he was the work of the devil, uh, hopefully you can get above that and look at how he brought people together he, I didn't agree with everything he said, but I agreed with so many things that he said that I had never heard the government say to me before that I got very enthusiastic, and I'm a tightwad. I've been very careful with my money all my life. Um, and uh, I donated the full 2700 to him that I'm allowed to under the law. Of course, to get on my soapbox, the government, other people were allowed to give billions to their people, but anyway, I gave him my 2700 and I did a lot to try to support him, and I showed up at things that I Facebooked, and, and I did what I thought I could figure out to do to support him. That unifying feature, I think maybe studying how he did that, um, what, what was going on there? Because sometimes things seem simple, but they're not. He's, he's doing things that you don't notice because you don't understand what he's doing. But uh, I thought he really unified millions and millions and millions of people that were otherwise, I mean, he had anarchists supporting him, he had rabid socialists rather than democratic socialists supporting him, he, he had uh, rabid Republicans supporting him, he had a, a very diverse following. And how did he, how did he do that? Because I think that's what we need is something that, as Robin says with the uh, uh, consensus, um, we don't have to agree on every thing, every aspect of it, but we need to recognize that, yeah, this is a really good plan. It has, has hiccups maybe, but I will get behind that plan and I will get it to work for the benefit of the plan. 
did. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was Jefferson. So Alex, did you want to say something? You're you're muted again. Sorry about that. Um this is point of order. You got twenty nine minutes left in this meeting, so I'm curious what you want if there's anything just to be you know, that you want to get done in, the, uh, in this meeting, you've got 29 minutes left. But also I was gonna say, um, uh, well, there's lots I could say about consensus and consent uh, and uh, running meetings, uh, uh, you know, aiming for, uh, uh, um, you know, what you're calling egalitarian meetings. The only thing, I'll just limit it to say that they're not mutually exclusive and that the system that I work with, which is sociocracy, <clears throat> goes by a couple of different names, <clears throat> excuse me, but sociocracy uh, uses a combination of um, consent and uh, egalitarian structure and consent decision making for policy and governance, but then it uses a hierarchical uh, um, autocratic system when groups have broken out into uh, particular projects or operations that they're going to get stuff done, you know, if you have someone who is an expert in finance and they're running the uh, accounting department of an organization, you're not really going to stand by while someone who doesn't understand mm -hmm. economics or, or accounting, you're not going to stand there while they say, well, I object to something, and they have no idea what they're talking about, you know, and you can't let and, uh, group decision making processes get hijacked by one individual, which is mostly what people have, or often at least, what people experience when they when they experience what uh, what is called consensus decision making, and they and then they end up suffering from what they call the tyranny of, excuse me, the tyranny of an individual, or the tyranny of the minority, you know, which can block a proposal for years and stop whole projects from happening because they can't find this. <laughs> this other solution or this third way. So anyway, um, just that it is quite possible to, to, to combine those two approaches to running the group. Um, there's times when a group really needs an agenda and, a, and someone who knows what's going on to steer the group and keep things on track. And then there's other times, there's other functions of a group that are much better served by having a consent process that's, um, you know, like you're saying, egalitarian. So anyway, just that they, they're not mutually exclusive to my main point. Great. Uh, and so you asked me if there was anything that I would uh, like to achieve with the last few minutes of this meeting. Um, I wouldn't mind if we actually could, as a group, choose uh, a name for the next event that I do, or, or maybe something about describing it. Um, if uh, so, I, I mean, I guess I would ask the what I've called this was um, a general assembly um, that's, uh, and I've also sort of another direction if it was an open space I would call it like an activist open space event and those sort of the general assembly versus activist open space I imagine those paint different sort of pictures in your mind so I guess um, or does anyone have a suggestion for what to call the next uh, either, either, either of those or, yeah, any? Just, uh, when you used the word earlier, how powerful equal is, uh, how, how about equal input? It uh, would, would open up to somebody just the first time looking at something saying, oh, that means that everybody has equal input. That is an idea. Sure. So at least putting something like that in the, in the description. For a layman, for a layman, because a lot of the, the terms you used, I didn't know when I walked in. Sure. But it may be something that more people would understand what's going on. Sure. Any other thoughts on that topic? I have, I have a suggestion. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I think you should call it the hive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important, I think, to create a different name because you're creating something very different. So. Um, literally create a brand that then people associate with this thing that we are building together. Um, and I would also suggest having a way for people to submit topics that they would like the hive to discuss and then have a basic voting system
for the top three things, let's say, so that people know ahead of time that this month, these are the three topics that the Hive has decided we were going to discuss together as a group in an egalitarian, open way. Um, I think that might draw uh, people who, to Alex's point, have a relevant um, or even just a passionate opinion about the topics that will be discussed that month. Great, interesting. Like a hive meetup. Hive building. Hive building. Yeah. By the way, I, I would suggest using meetup.com. It's a great platform for organizing these kinds of monthly events. Great. Any other thoughts on uh, naming uh, future events? Um, there was a time when there was a movement called the Conversation Cafe. <laughs> Do you remember that? I heard of it. It's still going back. on, no. What's that? It is still going on. Still going on. Yes. And uh, it does go around, you know, in a circle. There's a topic chosen ahead of time so people know what they're getting into. Um, I'm not advocating that you use that term, but um, I think a lot of people know what that is. Yeah. Um, the, I like the idea that Duran suggested of using the hive, because when I hear General Assembly, I think, you know, some legislative body, and it doesn't sound very interesting to me, <laughs> just because it seems like it's too big and it has to do with something, you know, I mean, if, if I know what the topic is, or if I know that the topics will be generated there, um, that is of more interest than, than um, if it's just this sort of vague. Um, the, the other thing is that honeybee democracy, um, there's a book called that, and um, as you know, and uh, somehow drawing on the analogy of how honeybees communicate with each other and the power structure that they have, it's kind of, uh, I think it's fascinating and I think it's um, an appropriate metaphor. Mm. Great. Any other comments on that topic of naming? If not, why don't we um, why don't we just do a quick round to, to close the, the meeting? Um, just anything you want to say before we uh, disperse? And um, you know, I'll start by just saying thank you so much, everyone that came and participated. Um, I have learned a ton. I'm going to be sort of really processing this for um, for quite some time as I prepare to do something like this again. Um, so thank you very much for your time and attention. And uh, we will just we'll circle around and we'll go ahead and start here again, if that's all right. Um, sure, this definitely wasn't what I was expecting to walk into today. Um, it sounds like you have a really good idea where um, people can come in and share their ideas for social and political change non-judgmentally. Is that sort of what you're trying to do? Okay. Um, it seems as though today's discussion has been um, based around how to format the meetings and not actually discussing those ideas, and so I don't know if that was your goal for, for today. Um, it would have been interesting to hear some things that people might share, and thank you to those of you that did share um, stories. Um, but I think if, uh, if everyone were sitting in a circle it might be a little bit more inviting and easier to share. Um, uh, yeah, so I'd be interested to see where this goes. Yeah. Well, I get my information from Laura and her teachings. Yeah. But this is very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and good luck with the evolution. Yeah. Well, I think this was a value, valuable, you know, what you're doing is very good because I think the majority of people are frustrated, but they would like to say what they're thinking and what, and they would like to also hear input. So I think it's, it's really very, very good that you're doing something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think the hive 
is starting to buzz, and it's it's um, there's a lot of work to be done, getting hive, and um, I think that uh, we have a lot of learning to do, but it's a positive thing. So I appreciate being here. So thank you, man. Thanks, for being here. <coughs> Uh, I'd like to say thank you and gratitude for your efforts to do this and efforts of people to get involved and uh, to show up and it, I think it can only grow. It will be very interesting to see what comes of this. Yeah. If we're here next month, I'll come again. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, then we can join online too, couldn't yeah. we? Yeah. Okay, so we'll need to get that information. Um, but one of the earliest questions that was tossed around was um, the pros and cons of, of uh, this kind of meeting and, and uh, total egalitarian or maybe not so total. And I think the hive analogy to not overstretch it um, uh, might be helpful because there, uh, there are specialized uh, members of the hive. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the facilitators that you mentioned uh, which probably means more to you than I understood because I've heard, I know what the, I know the term, but I don't, but you had a particular definition in practice and, uh, and I'm not familiar with that, but that sounds like an excellent thing that you do need a few selected people to, um, to facilitate. And, and Robin and I are, have both been sailors for many years and uh, uh, certainly I, realized, appreciated at an early age that a ship needs a captain. Uh, it can't be a democracy. Uh, because somebody, had, uh, I think in the military they say that uh, even a bad plan is better than no plan. Um, so there are times that something needs to get done and someone's sort of a uber facilitator, you know, somebody needs to coordinate the activity, otherwise I think it's just going to be chaos. But, um, but that all of the people involved, the Uber facilitator and everybody, um, I think cannot have a strong agenda. They can have preferences, everybody does, but uh, they can't let that get too far. I mean, it's, it's going to happen. You can't, we're humans, it's going to happen. But they can't let that get out of control. It's got to it's gotta facilitate, it's got to uh, include the hive. And, and Robin's thing of, uh, not necessarily what the majority wants, but what the majority will will follow, enthusiastically follow. I think that's a very. I think that's what Bernie was doing. I, I think that's one of the tricks he was doing. Um, but it's a technology that I'm not familiar with. I'm a mechanical engineer, so he he's in a whole different field. <laughs> well, I uh, I think that uh, you know what to say. I I, I would say that. I appreciate your idealism and the, uh, that you're trying to do something uh, on a massive scale. Um, and of course, everything has to start out small and then grow from there. Um, I think that people uh, have an impatience with process. And um, so uh, that's just something to take into account the whole idea that consensus is laborious and tedious, I think is, it depends on how it's conducted. And I really liked what Alex said about the difference between consent and, and using sociocracy. And so that would have been a discussion that we could have had about uh, Yaron's original question about can egalitarian, or what are the pros and cons of an egalitarian process? So anyway, there's there's a lot to to process. <laughs> Alex, do you have some final thoughts? Uh, I, yeah, I'd echo what Helen said. I just appreciate what you are trying to do, and I uh, appreciate being invited to participate and contribute if that's possible. Um, so I'm glad I was here, and. Um, I, I did need to leave actually a while ago, but I wanted to see where this was going. So uh, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks, for, thanks for putting it on. Thanks for staying around. <laughs> You're on? So I feel it in the same way. I'm, uh, I'm grateful to have been invited. I, um, I love to see things take a, a form and a life of their own. Um, and we're, we're the lucky 12 that will be able to say and maybe wear the, the Hive t-shirt someday, but we were... <laughs> 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 uh, 
the originals who, uh, during this kind of amorphous phase, started throwing ideas out there with you, and um, I appreciate being a part of it. Thank you for the invite. Thank you so much. Are you local? I am. I'm here in Fort Townsend. So. Because I was going to say, putting a bit in the leader, mm -hmm. you know, on the events page, mm -hmm. that's a great idea. Yes. Yeah. I, and I, I was actually trying, this is a perfect size for today. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, there's definitely more, more marketing and more accurate descriptive marketing. <laughs> Certainly an well, option. It's good. You just if you didn't have to change. Yeah. Spots, yeah. yeah. So thank you. Um, thank you. Feel free to if you want to ask me questions one on one. Uh, thank you guys so much, Yaron and Alex. If you need to drop off or. Let me. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Give your website one more time. One hive. One dot net, or just Matt Ready. If you search for that, you'll find my various websites. Yeah, hive one dot net. Oh, an e or not one. Number one. Hive is the number one. Yeah. Actually, I can even. I have cards. A little bit. Oh, can you find it? No. Your rights will go. Yeah. So, there's a stack of my cards here. <laughs> That'll get you to my commissioner website, which would get you to any other website. Um, <laughs>